We are in the kitchen today and we're going to be making our um, rabbit soup. Uh, basically this recipe is a, a really nice vegetable soup that we add ground rabbit to and uh, that ground rabbit is seasoned and so on and we will talk you through that as we get to that stage. One thing I did want to say on this recipe is that it is a pressure canning recipe. You cannot make this um, with the meat in it if you only have a water bath canner. But if you only have a water bath canner, be sure to just follow the recipe for the vegetable soup and you can always add the meat seasoned up later when you actually open that up and cook it on the stove. So it does work great both ways. I personally like to jar it with the meat and everything in because I like things to be really simple. You're going to start off with two pounds of ground rabbit. So if that's in your freezer, get it out. It needs time to defrost. And while that is happening, we're going to take 12 pounds of tomatoes and run them through the food mill. Now, the tomatoes do not have to be anything in particular. Uh, I do like a uh, aroma or something that's a bit meatier because I like my soup a little bit thicker. But uh, really, uh, this is a great recipe just to bone anything you've got growing in the garden. Uh, doesn't matter what color, doesn't matter what flavor, it kind of all just melds together. As anybody who's watched our channel knows, I love this machine. I love the uh, manual food mill. Um, it's great because I don't have to take the peels off my tomatoes. All I'm doing is slicing them up, making sure there's no dry rot or anything odd inside them. All you need is your tomatoes washed up clean. You would take the uh, oh, stem off and we just kind of slice it in half, make sure it looks good inside. And into our food mill it goes. Now if you do not have a food mill, what you would end up having to do is uh, water bath your tomatoes in hot water to take the skins off and squeeze out any excess juice. Um, you can also run it through a food mill, the handheld type if you have one of those as well. But I love this method. Okay, so we have got our tomatoes all milled and ready to go. Uh, I made about seven liters of tomato juice from the 12 pounds of tomatoes, so that's awesome. Our next step is going to be to season our rabbit meat. So we're starting with two pounds of ground rabbit that's been unthawed, and uh, Alex is going to take us through what we need for our seasoning. Basically, we're doing something kind of like a taco seasoning. Tell us what is going into this jar to be pre-mixed so up. Two tablespoons of chili powder, one tablespoon of cumin. Now the one thing that's very important as Alex is making this here is even though this is like a taco seasoning, I would recommend not using a store-bought seasoning mix and I'll tell you why in one second. What's next one, Alex? One teaspoon of onion powder. So the reason I suggest not using a pre-mixed uh, taco season is often they have flours or corn starches in them um, and that is not recommended to go into um, canning. So I always make it kind of myself that way I know that there's no flour in it and no stuff that shouldn't be in canning. That's right and what's our last ingredient? A half a teaspoon, sorry I had to look at the thing, of Garlic powder. All right. One of my favorite things. So, quick recap on that. We have, as Alex shakes it up, we have two tablespoons of chili, chili powder, powder, one tablespoon cumin, one teaspoon onion powder, and a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. All right, so we're going to just put that right onto our meat here. So, while Alex is busy working on our meat, uh, I'm going to take us through the next step here. You've got your big pot on the stove getting heated up. We need a quarter of a cup of butter in there. Uh, you want to kind of get that melted pretty good before we put the uh, rest of our ingredients in. There you can see it's starting to go nicely. Once you've got uh, the butter kind of getting melted and a little bit heated up, basically we're going to put in our ingredients here. You need four cups chopped onion two and a half cups of carrots, and one cup of celery. Uh, now, 
I did all of this in my food processor because I like to make things quick and easy. You could chop this if you wanted a little bit chunkier. Um, this ends up quite small pieces. Some of the some of the carrots stay a decent size, but for the most part, this is quite um, small, chopped upness. Not sure if that's proper terminology. I don't think that's a word. I don't think it's a word either. <laughs> Anyways, it's chopped small. So we're gonna put this onion in first. I'm looking up where it's oh, And you can you can hear that sizzle, so it's definitely nice and warm. And we're gonna get that kind of moving around first because the onions kind of are the part you want to get going. One thing that's very nice about this rabbit soup recipe is it's very versatile. I mean, if you had ground chicken, you could use that. Ground lamb, you could use that. The one thing you would watch with uh, going into the red meats would be um, um, fat, making sure that you are draining any excess grease or fat or oil off of your meat uh, because that can cause a problem when you're pressure canning if there's excess fat in uh, your products. But uh, definitely uh, works well for all types of meat. It's a fantastic soup. All right, so next going in is our one cup of celery and our two and a half cups of carrots. This is uh, fresh from our harvest this uh, summer and uh, we'll, we'll link our garlic harvest video uh, above just so if anybody wants to see we're very proud of it and it sure is wonderful to have a lot of garlic this year but this is six cloves of garlic going in as you can see here our meat is pretty much ready to go the wonderful thing about rabbit is it's very very lean uh, you don't really need to worry too much about draining this off i did put a little tiny bit of olive oil in the pan before we cooked the um, rabbit, but uh, it absorbs all that and you don't really need to worry too much about it. So we're going to get this scooped into our pot of veggies, which are also looking fantastic and ready to go. So this is smelling amazing. I wish you could actually smell it. But there's everything kind of content wise that's going in there. Next, I'm going to pour in my uh, seven liters of the tomato juice that I milled out of my tomatoes. Uh, it's quite thick, which is fantastic. These uh, Arctic Plenty tomatoes are uh, definitely something we're going to give another shot next year. Um, and the other thing that I want to mention, you're going to need two cups of spices. I have basil, parsley, and something new to our garden this year, lemon basil, which I actually bought specifically for the lemony basil soup. So uh, we're going to get this all chopped up and ready to go in here as well. You're going to need to bring it to a boil uh, before you put these herbs in. So we're going to do that and then bring it back. As our soup base is uh, coming to a boil, uh, I've gotten my jars ready. We're going to do them in the oven to sterilize, uh, 225 for at least uh, 10 minutes. So we're going to get those in and get that going while we're waiting. The other thing I should also mention you need to add is one quarter cup sugar and four teaspoons of kosher salt. Now you can adjust that to your taste, but I do find I like it with the salt. So here we are, and you can see. Now remember this soup, uh, what I do tend to do is add uh, noodles or rice at the time of making my meal. You can eat it as it is. We all prefer it with some noodles or something like that added to it. it just makes it go a little further too, which is kind of nice. But you could also take this down to uh, less tomatoes. I'm finding this is a little bit thinner than what it normally is. So I'm thinking my 12 pounds of tomatoes maybe should have been 10 pounds. But uh, it's to your discretion. You could also add more veggies meat content if that's really what you'd like to. It's up to you. We've been boiling now for about 15 minutes. I've just put in my herbs and turned the heat down. Last ingredient to add is going to be three quarters of a cup of lemon juice and our jars have one minute left on their sterilization in the oven and then we're going to jar this up and pressure can it. And there we have it. So in total we ended up with the seven jars which is exactly what I kind of thought. That's what I sterilized was the seven jars and we probably have enough left over for a bowl of soup for somebody which is a nice little treat or a taste test for everybody. Um, but now we're in the pressure canner. We're going to lock this lid on and you need to do this at, uh, well for my altitude is 10 pounds of pressure for 90 minutes. Um, 
definitely check uh, your canner specs on this. This is a meat product, so it does need to have the full 90 minutes. So if you're going to uh, do this without the meat in a water bath canner, uh, you would need to water bath can this boiling for 35 minutes. Um, definitely follow your you know, go-to canning instructions uh, that you use on a regular basis. But it's a wonderful soup base. Like I said, we add noodles or rice to this. You can just eat it on its own with biscuits. It's fantastic and a great way to use some of that rabbit. So, hope you enjoy and uh, definitely leave us a comment if you do try this.